Even as sales of battery electric vehicles surge, two companies notably, Toyota and Hyundai, continue to press on with what I think is a noble experiment, the hydrogen electric vehicle. Like this, the Toyota Mirai. In fact, this is the second generation of its hydrogen car. It's excellent. It's peppy. It rides well. It's dead quiet. It's quite luxurious. But of course, there's the issue of where do you fuel it up? Hop in. It's time for Family Wheels. Family Wheels is not powered by hydrogen or electricity or gasoline, petrol if you wish. It's driven by your likes. Likes help spread the word. While you're at it, hit subscribe and click the notification bell. And if the Mirai provokes your thoughts, leave a comment. Thanks. Quite apart from the amazing technology of the Mirai is its look. This is perhaps one of the best looking Toyota or Lexus vehicles in recent memory. Compared to the first generation, it is longer, also lower. It's based on the TNGA, Toyota New Generation Architecture Dash L platform. That's really important. That's the same as under the big Lexus vehicles. So you have quite a luxurious car, quite a large car, also quite conventional looking, but my how the styling has cleaned up. The angry fish mouth has been dialed right back. We have this nice blunt end here at the front and then down the sides, not uninteresting, but also very clean. Similarly at the rear, nothing overdone, nothing too gimmicky looking on this car. And here is where the magic happens. Well, it didn't always happen here. In the first generation Mirai, the fuel cell stack was under the cabin floor. Now it's moved up to the area that we commonly know as the engine bay. Hydrogen from the fuel tanks and air entering from the intake grill meet in the fuel cell stack. There, a chemical reaction involving oxygen and hydrogen sends electrons to the drive motor and the small battery. Water's the only tailpipe emission in a fuel cell vehicle. Fueling, of course, is the elephant in the room when it comes to FCEVs, fuel cell electric vehicles, of which there are two these days, the Mirai as well as the Hyundai Nexo SUV. Here in the Metro Vancouver area, we have three, count them, fueling stations in our, our whole region for, what, over two million people. And east of here, the next stop for a hydrogen station is Quebec City. The situation is substantially better in California, which is basically the only place in the U.S. that you can get hydrogen for a car. The Los Angeles area has many fueling stations. Similarly, the San Francisco-San Jose corridor. And if you're in the Los Angeles or San Francisco-San Jose or Metro Vancouver areas, you'll go a long time between fill-ups because the Mirai has excellent range. This luxury spec limited trim is claimed to have 574 kilometers, while the base XLE has 647. That's 357 miles and 402 miles respectively. Amazingly, it means I could do a Vancouver-Seattle round trip with more than 100k to spare. LA to San Francisco would need a fill up at the only H2 station on the I-5 between those cities at Coalinga, although the base spec XLE would just accomplish the drive on one tank full. Let's see if we can make it work. There was one glitch, the touch screen was not cooperative at first, but the problem soon went away and did not occur at a different location. Issues reported by users include the nozzle freezing to the car, requiring a number of minutes to thaw. But the main complaint is delays due to lining up behind other hydrogen vehicles to use a single pump. That'll be no surprise to battery electric vehicle drivers who face the same delays even with multiple chargers at a station. When I say that the Mirai is as quiet as a Rolls Royce, I don't have actual measurements for that, but I have driven both and this feels as quiet as a Rolls Royce. And something just came to me as to one possible reason for that. The electric motor, one electric motor, 
is in the rear. It's way back there. It's not up front. The Mirai is so darn quiet that one of the only sounds you hear other than the wheels on the road is the little Toyota outer space noise that all its electrified vehicles have in order to warn pedestrians and cyclists and so forth at low speed. Toyota has gone to great lengths to isolate road noise as well, while still keeping a, a reasonably involved feel for the driver. In fact, 50-50 weight distribution in this vehicle, that's quite a surprise. Pretty nimble for a big car. And remember, it's rear wheel drive. All wheel drive is not an option. The previous Mirai was front wheel drive. It's got less than 200 horsepower, but because it's electric, the torque kicks in thanks to the fuel cell and hybrid drive combined. See ya. We've got 20 inch tires, fair bit of uh, rubber on the road, and that certainly helps the braking. Very smooth, linear, not grabby, really befitting a uh, large luxury car. Now, a hydrogen powered electric car is not free to operate. Hydrogen costs money, and there's a big variety in hydrogen prices depending on your location and how the hydrogen is sourced out. Also, not going into the issue of cost to produce the hydrogen and its efficiency and so forth, but the government figures out of Canada and the United States they show uh, the fuel consumption equivalent to in the three liter per hundred range or in the 70 miles per gallon equivalent range uh, compared to a gasoline vehicle. With many billions of dollars pouring into production of battery electric vehicles, batteries themselves, and charging infrastructure, the hydrogen highway looks to be decades out. Japan, California, and Germany lead the way, but infrastructure cost is the biggest barrier. You could install about 10 350 kilowatt ultrafast EV chargers for the price of one hydrogen filling station. So the benefit calculation involves upfront costs versus how many vehicles can be handled per day. Perhaps we'll see both types at the same location. But the mere existence of series production vehicles like the Mirai, Japanese for future, shows the fuel cell holds promise. Toyota developed its fuel cell technology in-house and has released more than 5,000 related patents royalty-free. In the near term, hydrogen could work well for urban fleets such as taxis or delivery vehicles as they'd be out of service for less time than EVs that are being recharged. Our luxurious top trim review car is not eligible for government subsidies in Canada, but the base model XLE gets $5,000 from Ottawa, while here in BC the rebate can be up to $4,000 but is income tested. The U.S. $8,000 federal tax rebate on the Mirai has been eliminated, although California offers $4,500. But Toyota itself is throwing money at customers. Deals include up to $25,000 cash back or a $15,000 fuel card from Toyota Financial Services. Offer not valid in Canada. Oh, this is a shock. You get a big car, you expect a lot of space. That's not the case here, at least with the rear-facing child seat behind me, the one that takes up the most space. Up front, I'm 5 feet 11 inches tall, 180 centimeters. I can't even get into the front passenger seat. So, the child seat you have in the rear better be of the forward-facing variety. The lack of rear seat room doesn't just affect child seats. My knees are up against the driver's seat, driver's seat set for me, and my feet are touching the underside of the seat in front of me. Now, I don't think it's because of anything to do with the hydrogen tanks. However, there is a hybrid battery behind us. Very disappointing back here, especially when you consider how much luxury is going on. We've got a full set of uh, climate controls and seat heat and seat ventilation and even audio controls, as well as, of course, the panoramic moonroof. <music> That's our look at the 2022 Toyota Mirai. I think it's a remarkable vehicle. But what do you think? Leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for liking, and thanks for subscribing. I'm Richard Detman, and I'll see you next time on Family Wheels.